Peripheral Artery Disease, Wikipedia Article Audio Peripheral artery disease is a narrowing of the arteries other than those that supply the heart or the brain. When narrowing occurs in the heart, it is called coronary artery disease, while, in the brain, it is called cerebrovascular disease. Peripheral artery disease most commonly affects the legs, but other arteries may also be involved. The classic symptom is leg pain when walking which resolves with rest, known as intermittent claudication. Other symptoms including skin ulcers, bluish skin, cold skin, or poor nail and hair growth may occur in the affected leg. Complications may include an infection or tissue death which may require amputation, coronary artery disease, or stroke. Up to 50% of cases of PAD are without symptoms. Signs and Symptoms The main risk factor is cigarette smoking. Other risk factors include diabetes, high blood pressure, and high blood cholesterol. The underlying mechanism is usually atherosclerosis. Other causes include artery spasm. PAD is typically diagnosed by finding an ankle brachial index less than 0.90, which is the systolic blood pressure at the ankle divided by the systolic blood pressure of the arm. Duplex ultrasonography and angiography may also be used. Angiography is more accurate and allows for treatment at the same time, however, it is associated with greater risks. It is unclear if screening for disease is useful as it has not been properly studied. In those with intermittent claudication from PAD, stopping smoking and supervised exercise therapy improves outcomes. Medications, including statins, ACE inhibitors, and silastosol also may help. Aspirin does not appear to help those with mild disease but is usually recommended in those with more significant disease. Anticoagulants such as warfarin are not typically of benefit. Procedures used to treat the disease include bypass grafting, angioplasty, and atherectomy. Causes in 2015 about 155 million people had PAD worldwide. In the developed world it affects about 5.3% of 45 to 50 years olds and 18.6% of 85 to 90 year olds. In the developing world it affects 4.6% of people between the ages of 45 to 50 and 15% of people between the ages of 85 to 90. In the developed world PAD is equally common among men and women while in the developing world women are more commonly affected. In 2015 PAD resulted in about 52,500 deaths up from 16,000 deaths in 1990. Risk Factors Up to 50% of people with PAD may have no symptoms. Symptoms of PAD in the legs and feet are generally divided into two categories. Diagnosis Medical signs of PAD in the legs, due to inadequate perfusion, include Classification PAD in other parts of the body depends on the organ affected. Renal artery stenosis can cause renovascular hypertension. Carotid artery disease can cause strokes and transient ischemic attacks. Screening Risk factors contributing to PAD are the same as those for atherosclerosis. Peripheral arterial disease is more common in the following populations of people. Treatment Lifestyle changes Medication Revascularization Upon suspicion of PAD, the first-line study is the ankle brachial index. When the blood pressure readings in the ankles is lower than that in the arms, 
blockages in the arteries which provide blood from the heart to the ankle are suspected. Normal ABI range of 1.00 to 1.40. The patient is diagnosed with PAD when the ABI is less than or equal to 0.90. ABI values of 0.91 to 0.99 are considered borderline, and values greater than 1.40 indicate non compressible arteries. PAD is graded as mild to moderate if the ABI is between 0.41 and 0.90, and an ABI less than 0.40 is suggestive of severe PAD. These relative categories have prognostic value. In people with suspected PAD but normal resting ABIs, exercise testing of ABI can be done. A baseline ABI is obtained prior to exercise. The patient is then asked to exercise until claudication pain occurs, following which the ankle pressure is again measured. A decrease in ABI of 15% 20% would be diagnostic of PAD. It is possible for conditions which stiffen the vessel walls to produce false negatives usually, but not always indicated by abnormally high ABIs. Such results and suspicions merit further investigation and higher level studies. If ABIs are abnormal the next step is generally a lower limb Doppler ultrasound examination to look at site and extent of atherosclerosis. Other imaging can be performed by angiography where a catheter is inserted into the common femoral artery and selectively guided to the artery in question. While injecting a radiothense contrast agent an X-ray is taken. Any flow-limiting stenoses found in the X-ray can be identified and treated by atherectomy, angioplasty, or stenting. Contrast angiography is the most readily available and widely used imaging technique. Modern multi-slice computerized tomography scanners provide direct imaging of the arterial system as an alternative to angiography. Magnetic resonance angiography is a non-invasive diagnostic procedure that uses a combination of a large magnet, radio frequencies, and a computer to produce detailed images to provide pictures of blood vessels inside the body. The advantages of MRA include its safety and ability to provide high-resolution three-dimensional imaging of the entire abdomen, pelvis, and lower extremities in one sitting. Peripheral artery occlusive disease is commonly divided in the Fontaine stages, introduced by René Fontaine in 1954 for chronic limb ischemia. A classification by the Society for Vascular Surgery and International Society of Cardiovascular Surgery, introduced in 1986 and revised in 1997, consists of four grades and seven categories. The task classification suggested PAD treatment by severity of disease seen on angiogram. More recently classifications such as the Society for Vascular Surgery Wound, Ischemia and Foot Infection Classification, take into account that ischemia and angiographic disease patterns are not the only determinants of amputation risk. Noticeable change in color blueness, or in temperature when compared to the other limb, Berger's test can check for pallor on elevation of limb and redness on a change to a sitting position, in an assessment of arterial sufficiency, diminished hair and nail growth on affected limb and digits. Moderate to severe pad in the area of Fontaine's stage 3 to 4, or Rutherford's category 4 to 5, presents limb threat in the form of critical limb ischemia. It is not clear if screening for disease is useful as it has not been properly studied. Depending on the severity of the disease, the following steps can be taken, according to the following guidelines. Silastosol or pentoxifiline can improve symptoms in some. 
Silas Dossal may improve walking distance for people who experience claudication due to peripheral artery disease, but there is no strong evidence to suggest that it improves the quality of life, decreases mortality, or decreases the risk of cardiovascular events. Treatment with other drugs or vitamins are unsupported by clinical evidence, but trials evaluating the effect of folate and vitamin B12 on hyperhomocysteinemia, a putative vascular risk factor, are near completion. After a trial of the best medical treatment outline above, if symptoms persist, patients may be referred to a vascular or endovascular surgeon. The benefit of revascularization is thought to correspond to the severity of ischemia and the presence of other risk factors for limb loss such as wound and infection severity. An updated consensus guideline from the American College of Cardiology and American Heart Association for the Diagnosis and Treatment of Lower Extremity, Renal, Mesenteric and Abdominal Aortic Pad was compiled in 2013 combining the 2005 and 2011 guidelines. Individuals with PAD have an exceptionally elevated risk for cardiovascular events and the majority will eventually die of a cardiac or cerebrovascular etiology. Prognosis is correlated with the severity of the PAD as measured by the ankle brachial index. Large vessel pad increases mortality from cardiovascular disease significantly. Pad carries a greater than 20% risk of a coronary event in 10 years. There is a low risk that an individual with claudication will develop severe ischemia and require amputation, but the risk of death from coronary events is 3 to 4 times higher than matched controls without claudication. Of patients with intermittent claudication, only 7% will undergo lower extremity bypass surgery, 4% major amputations, and 16% worsening claudication, but stroke and heart attack events are elevated, and the 5-year mortality rate is estimated to be 30%. The prevalence of peripheral artery disease in the general population is 12-14% affecting up to 20% of those over 70, 70% 80% of affected individuals are asymptomatic, only a minority ever require revascularization or amputation. Peripheral artery disease affects 1 in 3 diabetics over the age of 50. In the USA peripheral arterial disease affects 12-20% of Americans age 65 and older. Approximately 10 million Americans have PAD. Despite its prevalence and cardiovascular risk implications, only 25% of PAD patients are undergoing treatment. The incidence of symptomatic PAD increases with age, from about 0.3% per year for men aged 40-55 years to about 1% per year for men aged over 75 years. The prevalence of PAD varies considerably depending on how PAD is defined, and the age of the population being studied. Diagnosis is critical, as people with PAD have a 4 to 5 times higher risk of heart attack or stroke. The Diabetes Control and Complications Trial, and the UK Prospective Diabetes Study Trials, in people with type 1 and type 2 diabetes respectively, demonstrated that glycemic control is more strongly associated with microvascular disease than macrovascular disease. It may be that pathologic changes occurring in small vessels are more sensitive to chronically elevated glucose levels than is atherosclerosis occurring in larger arteries. In those who have developed critically poor blood flow to the legs, it is unclear if autotransplantation of autologous mononuclear cells is useful or not. Guidelines Only one randomized controlled trial has been conducted comparing vascular bypass to angioplasty for the treatment of severe PAD. 
the trial found no difference in amputation-free survival between vascular bypass and angioplasty at the planned clinical endpoint, however the trial has been criticized as being underpowered, limiting endovascular options, and comparing inappropriate endpoints. As of 2017, Two randomized clinical trials are being conducted to better understand the optimal revascularization technique for severe PAD and critical limb ischemia, the BEST CLI trial, and the BASIL-2 trial. In 2011, PCMV VEGF 165 was registered in Russia as the first in-class gene therapy drug for treatment of peripheral artery disease including the advanced stage of critical limb ischemia. Prognosis Epidemiology Research Smoking tobacco use in any form is the single most important modifiable cause of PAD internationally. Smokers have up to a tenfold increase in relative risk for PAD in a dose-response relationship. Exposure to secondhand smoke from environmental exposure has also been shown to promote changes in blood vessel lining which is a precursor to atherosclerosis. Smokers are two to three times more likely to have lower extremity peripheral arterial disease than coronary artery disease. More than 80% 90% of patients with lower extremity peripheral arterial disease are current or former smokers. The risk of PAD increases with the number of cigarettes smoked per day and the number of years smoked. Diabetes mellitus causes between two and four times increased risk of PAD by causing endothelial and smooth muscle cell dysfunction in peripheral arteries. The risk of developing lower extremity peripheral arterial disease is proportional to the severity and duration of diabetes. Dyslipidemia a high level of low-density lipoprotein and a low level of high-density lipoprotein in the blood, elevation of total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, and triglyceride levels each have been correlated with accelerated PAD. Correction of dyslipidemia by diet and slash or medication is associated with a major improvement in rates of heart attack and stroke. Hypertension elevated blood pressure is correlated with an increase in the risk of developing PAD, as well as in associated coronary and cerebrovascular events. Hypertension increased the risk of intermittent claudication 2.5 to 4 fold in men and women, respectively. Risk of PAD also increases in individuals who are over the age of 50, male, obese, heart attack or stroke or with a family history of vascular disease, other risk factors which are being studied include levels of various inflammatory mediators such as C-reactive protein, fibrinogen, hyperviscosity, hypercoagulable state. All people who have leg symptoms with exertion or ischemic rest pain, all people aged 65 years and over regardless of risk factor status, all people between the age of 50 to 69 and who have a cardiovascular risk factor, age less than 50 years, with diabetes and one other atherosclerosis risk factor, individuals with an abnormal lower extremity pulse examination, those with known atherosclerotic coronary, carotid, or renal artery disease, all people with a Framingham risk score 10%-20%, all people who have previously experienced chest pain stage i asymptomatic incomplete blood vessel obstruction stage 2 mild claudication pain in limb grade 0 category 0 asymptomatic grade i category 1 mild claudication grade i category 2 Moderate claudication, grade I, category 3, severe claudication, grade 2, category 4, rest pain, grade 3, category 5, minor tissue loss, ischemic ulceration not exceeding ulcer of the digits of the foot, 
Grade 4, Category 6, Major Tissue Loss, Severe Ischemic Ulcers or Frank Gangrene. Angioplasty can be done on solitary lesions in large arteries, such as the femoral artery, but angioplasty may not have sustained benefits. Patency rates following angioplasty are highest for iliac arteries, and decrease with arteries towards the toes. Other criteria that affect outcome following revascularization are length of lesion, and number of lesions. There does not appear to be long-term advantages or sustained benefit to placing a stent following angioplasty in order to hold the narrowing of the superficial femoral artery open, atherectomy, in which the plaque is scraped off of the inside of the vessel wall, vascular bypass grafting can be performed to circumvent a diseased area of the arterial vasculature. The great saphenous vein is used as a conduit if available although artificial material is often used for long grafts when adequate venous conduit is unavailable, when gangrene has set in, amputation is required to prevent infected tissues from causing sepsis a life-threatening illness, thrombolysis and thrombectomy are used in cases of arterial thrombosis or embolism. Peripheral Arterial Disease at the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute Peripheral Arterial Disease at the American College of Foot and Ankle Surgeons, Gerhard Herman, Marie D., Gornick, Heather L., Barrett, Coletta, Barshas, Neil R., Corriere, Matthew A., E.T.A.L. 2016 AHA slash ACC Guideline on the Management of Patients with Lower Extremity Peripheral Artery Disease Executive Summary Circulation 135, CIR.00000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000